Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Everything I hear him saying is truth. I know it. The truth in his word literally comes from the Bible. The more you watch it, the more you realize it is the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. So this is the end of my first week of teaching on The Word Became Flesh. I tell you, this is a powerful teaching, and actually it's a combination of many different things that I teach, and it's all brought to bear on the virgin birth. I hadn't actually got to those scriptures yet about the virgin birth of Jesus, but uh, that's where I'm headed, and what I'm doing is giving some understanding of why it took 4,000 years for Jesus to come into this earth as a little baby and grow up, become our Savior, why did it take 4,000 years, and why did God have to become a man? Couldn't He have redeemed us some other way? I'm giving some background on this, and ultimately, if you understand these things we're talking about, it will make the virgin birth just come alive to you, why it had to happen, how it happened, and I believe it'll bless you. Plus, it'll help you in how to receive your miracle from God because the virgin birth was an absolute miracle. Even God is constrained by some of the laws that He made. So I've already taught a lot of things. If you've missed any of this, please go back and look at our programs or get these materials. But I was sharing the last couple of days how that Satan came to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 through a serpent, the most subtle animal, not the biggest, not the most intimidating, uh, not the most ferocious, but he came the, through the most subtle because he had no power to force them to do anything. He had to deceive them and get them to turn the authority and control that God had given them over to Satan. And I made a statement two days ago. This would have been on Wednesday's broadcast, and I didn't have time to explain it. I want to go into that a little more today. But I said that God created Lucifer. This is from Isaiah chapter 14. AND LUCIFER WAS A GODLY ANGEL. Uh, EZEKIEL CHAPTER 28 TALKS ABOUT ALL OF THE THINGS THAT HE WAS ADORNED WITH, AND IT DESCRIBES HIM IN PERFECTION AS BEING IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN IN THIS STATE OF PERFECTION. DON'T FORGET WHERE I'M GOING. I'm, I'M SAYING THAT TO MYSELF AS MUCH AS TO YOU, BUT LET ME TURN OVER HERE TO EZEKIEL CHAPTER 28 FOR JUST A SECOND AND READ A COUPLE OF THESE THINGS BECAUSE THIS IS PERTINENT TO WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT. BUT EZEKIEL CHAPTER 28 IS DESCRIBING SATAN IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN. EZEKIEL 28, 12, SON OF MAN, TAKE UP A LAMENTATION UPON THE KING OF TYRUS. IF I HAD TIME, I COULD SHOW YOU THAT THIS IS NOT TALKING ABOUT THE PHYSICAL MAN. SOME OF THE THINGS IT SAID RIGHT HERE, IT EVEN CALLS HIM A CHERUB, WHICH IS AN ANGELIC BEING. BUT IT'S TALKING ABOUT THE DEMONIC POWER THAT OPERATED THROUGH HIM. THIS HAPPENED IN DANIEL CHAPTER 9 AND CHAPTER 10, TALKING ABOUT THE PRINCE OF PERSIA CAME AND WITHSTOOD THEM AND FOUGHT AGAINST MICHAEL THE ARCHANGEL. IT ISN'T TALKING ABOUT THE PHYSICAL PERSON. IT'S TALKING ABOUT THE DEMONIC POWER OPERATING BEHIND THEM. BUT IT GOES ON AND SAYS, TAKE UP A LAMENTATION UPON THE KING OF TYRUS AND SAY UNTO HIM, THUS SAITH THE LORD GOD, THOU SEALEST UP THE SUM FULL OF WISDOM AND PERFECT IN BEAUTY. THOU HAST BEEN IN EDEN. THE GARDEN OF GOD. NOW, THIS IS ANOTHER INDICATION THAT THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT A PHYSICAL MAN, BECAUSE EDEN, THE GARDEN OF EDEN, AS DESCRIBED IN GENESIS CHAPTER 2 AND CHAPTER 3, uh, WHEN GOD KICKED ADAM AND EVE OUT OF EDEN, HE PLACED A CHERUB THERE WITH A FLAMING SWORD THAT TURNED EVERY WAY TO PROTECT THE TREE OF LIFE SO THAT NOBODY WOULD EAT OF IT. AND SO NO ONE HAS EVER BEEN ALLOWED BACK INTO THE GARDEN OF EDEN. AND uh, I DON'T KNOW ACTUALLY WHAT HAPPENED TO THE GARDEN OF EDEN, WHETHER IT BECAME SOME OF THOSE DESERTS OVER THERE IN THE MIDDLE EAST, OR, YOU KNOW, IN THE BOOK OF REVELATION, IT SAYS THAT THE TREE OF LIFE IS IN THE NEW JERUSALEM IN THE MIDDLE OF THIS uh, RIVER THAT RUNS BY IT, AND IT'S FOR THE HEALING OF THE NATIONS. AND SO EITHER GOD CREATED ANOTHER TREE OF LIFE OR HE TRANSPORTED THAT ONE TO HEAVEN, IT'S POSSIBLE THAT THE GARDEN OF EDEN HAS BEEN TRANSLATED, OR AT THE VERY LEAST, WE CAN'T FIND IT TODAY. MY POINT IS, FOR THIS PERSON OR THIS BEING TO HAVE BEEN IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN, THIS IS DESCRIBING BEFORE THE FALL OF ADAM AND EVE. SO THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT THE PHYSICAL MAN, THE KING OF TYRUS. IT'S TALKING ABOUT THE DEMONIC POWER THAT OPERATED BEHIND HIM, AND IT DESCRIBES HIM IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN. IN VERSE 13, IT SAYS, THOU HAST BEEN IN EDEN, THE GARDEN OF GOD, EVERY PRECIOUS STONE WAS THY COVERING. 
the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Again, the wording here, we could spend a lot of time on this, but it's talking about him being adorned in a beautiful way, diamond, beryl, onyx, all of these precious stones. And then it talks about his pipes and his tabrets were in him. This has led some commentators to believe that uh, Lucifer was actually a musical angel, maybe the leader of all of the worship in heaven, AND HE LITERALLY, HIS BODY WAS LIKE A MUSICAL INSTRUMENT. HE COULD MAKE SOUNDS AND BEAUTIFUL SOUNDS AND STUFF. SO THIS IS DESCRIBING HIM IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN, STILL IN A PERFECT STATE, NOT AS A DEMONIC POWER. OVER IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 14, IT TALKS ABOUT THAT LUCIFER THERE, AND IT USES THAT TERM, LUCIFER, TO DESCRIBE HIM IN um, ISAIAH CHAPTER 14. AND IT SAYS, WHEN WE SEE HIM, WE WILL SAY, IS THIS THE ONE? THAT WEAKENED THE NATIONS, THAT DESTROYED PEOPLE'S LIVES. WE'RE GOING TO LOOK AT HIM AND LOOK AT THIS UGLY, DETESTABLE THING AND THINK, IS THIS THE ONE THAT RUINED MY LIFE? BUT SEE, HERE IT IS DESCRIBING HIM IN BEAUTY AND MUSICAL INSTRUMENTS AND ALL OF THESE THINGS. IN VERSE 14, IT SAYS, THOU ART THE ANOINTED CHERUB THAT COVERETH, AND I HAVE SET THEE SO. THOU WAST UPON THE HOLY MOUNTAIN OF GOD. THOU DIDST WALK UP AND DOWN IN THE MIDST OF THE STONES OF FIRE. THOU WAST PERFECT IN THY WAYS FROM THE DAY THAT THOU WAST CREATED UNTIL INIQUITY WAS FOUND IN THEE. AND IT GOES ON AND SAYS A LOT OF OTHER THINGS. THE REASON I BROUGHT THAT UP IS TO SAY THIS IS TALKING ABOUT SATAN, THAT DEMONIC POWER. IF I HAD MORE TIME, I BELIEVE I COULD ESTABLISH THAT BEYOND A DOUBT. AND IT'S DESCRIBING HIM IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN. SOME PEOPLE HAVE A THEORY THAT THERE WAS A PRE-ADAMIC CIVILIZATION AND THAT WHEN IT SAYS IN GENESIS 1 THAT GOD CREATED THE HEAVENS AND THE EARTH, THAT THAT WAS IN THE BILLIONS, MILLIONS OF YEARS AGO, AND THEN GENESIS 1, 2, AND THE EARTH WAS WITHOUT FORM. THEY WILL SAY THAT THE EARTH BECAME VOID AND WITHOUT FORM AND THAT THAT IS A REFLECTION OF THAT THIS CREATED BEING, LUCIFER, WAS OVER THIS PRE-ADAMIC CIVILIZATION AND HE LED THEM INTO SIN AND GOD JUDGED THEM AND DESTROYED IT AND WIPED OUT THE EARTH AND MADE IT VOID. AND THEN GENESIS 1, 3 BEGINS THE RECREATION OF THE EARTH. ANYWAY, I HAVEN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO ALL OF THAT, BUT I DON'T BELIEVE THAT. THERE'S A NUMBER OF REASONS I DON'T BELIEVE IT. YOU CAN BELIEVE IT. Uh, JUST GIVE ME SOME GRACE, BUT I'M TELLING, I DON'T BELIEVE THAT'S WHAT THE SCRIPTURE TEACHES. BUT HERE'S MY POINT. THE PEOPLE WHO BELIEVE THAT, THEY WILL TAKE AN OBSCURE SCRIPTURE OVER IN REVELATION CHAPTER 12, WHERE IT TALKS ABOUT A DRAGON THAT GETS CAST OUT OF HEAVEN, AND THIS DRAGON WITH, a, with HIS TAIL BRINGS ONE-THIRD OF THE STARS AND CASTS THEM TO THE EARTH. AND SO THEY SAY THAT THAT'S SATAN, AND IT DOES SAY IN REVELATION CHAPTER 12 THAT THAT OLD DRAGON IS SATAN. SO THAT IS TRUE. IT'S SYMBOLIC, BUT IT DEFINES THAT SYMBOLISM AND SAYS THAT THE DRAGON IS SATAN. BUT IT DOESN'T SAY WHAT THE STARS ARE. PEOPLE JUST ASSUME THAT THAT'S SATAN TAKING ONE-THIRD OF THE ANGELS THAT GOD HAD CREATED AND THAT THEY REBELLED AGAINST GOD. WELL, FIRST OF ALL, THAT'S NOT GOOD BIBLE INTERPRETATION TO TAKE SOMETHING THAT IS DEFINITELY SYMBOLISM AND IT DOES SAY THAT SATAN WAS THE DRAGON, SO IT EXPLAINS THAT SYMBOLISM, BUT IT DIDN'T EXPLAIN THE STARS THAT WERE THROWN TO THE EARTH. IT'S NOT GOOD BIBLE INTERPRETATION TO TAKE SYMBOLISM THAT ISN'T USED ANYWHERE ELSE IN SCRIPTURE. THIS IS THE ONLY TIME IN SCRIPTURE THAT IT SAYS ANYTHING ABOUT SATAN HAVING ONE-THIRD OF ANYTHING. AND PEOPLE MAKE A DOCTRINE OUT OF THAT. You, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 19, JESUS QUOTED THIS, PAUL QUOTED IT TWICE FROM DEUTERONOMY 19, THAT IN THE MOUTH OF TWO OR THREE WITNESSES, EVERYTHING SHOULD BE ESTABLISHED. YOU DON'T TAKE ONE PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE AND BASE A MAJOR DOCTRINE ON THAT. YOU NEED MULTIPLE WITNESSES. THE WORD WILL CONFIRM IT, AND YOU HAVE TO INTERPRET SCRIPTURE BY SCRIPTURE. SO ANYWAY, MY POINT IS, I'M NOT SURE THAT THAT LITERALLY IS SAYING THAT SATAN TOOK ONE-THIRD OF THE ANGELS. IT'S POSSIBLE THAT THAT'S WHAT IT MEANS. I'LL GRANT YOU THAT. BUT I'M NOT GOING TO SAY IT BECAUSE IT'S NOT GOOD BIBLE INTERPRETATION. BUT EVEN IF YOU BELIEVE THAT SATAN TOOK ONE-THIRD OF THE ANGELS AND REBELLED AT GOD, that does, THAT'S NOT GOOD ODDS. 
I, I believe the devil is stupid for fighting against God, but he's not ignorant. You know, if I was the devil and I was going to fight against God, I wouldn't have fought against him if I'd have had 100% of the angels because God's the Creator and He could have wiped them all out. I wouldn't have done that, but certainly if I only had one-third of the angels, I wouldn't rebel against God. How did Satan rebel at God? The Scripture makes it very clear. Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus talked about the devil came and tempted him on the Mount of Temptation. There was a real being. Satan is not just a concept or a force or a personification of evil. He is a being. He was created by God. But God created Lucifer. Isaiah chapter 14 talks about that, the son of the morning. AND IT TELLS YOU WHAT HIS TRANSGRESSION WAS. HE DIDN'T HATE GOD IN THE SENSE THAT HE DIDN'T LIKE HIM. HE WAS ENVIOUS OF GOD. HE SAID, I WILL BE LIKE THE MOST HIGH GOD. I WILL EXALT MY THRONE ABOVE THE STARS OF THE NORTH. I WILL SIT ON THE SIDES OF THE NORTH. I WILL BE LIKE GOD. SATAN'S TRANSGRESSION WAS ENVY AND JEALOUSY, NOT HATRED AND REJECTION. AND SO HOW DID HE REBEL AT GOD? RIGHT HERE IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN, I BELIEVE, IS WHERE THIS REBELLION TOOK PLACE. AND HERE'S THE LOGIC BEHIND THIS. IMAGINE THAT YOU WERE GOING TO GO IN AND ROB A BANK, AND THE BANK'S GOT SECURITY GUARDS, AND THEY'VE GOT WEAPONS. THEY GOT AUTOMATIC WEAPONS, AND MAYBE ALL YOU HAVE IS A KNIFE. YOU DON'T HAVE ANYTHING, REALLY. HOW ARE YOU GOING TO OVERPOWER THESE PEOPLE? YOU GO IN AND YOU TAKE A HOSTAGE, AND YOU TAKE THIS HOSTAGE AND PUT THIS KNIFE TO THEIR THROAT AND SAY, IF YOU SHOOT AT ME, IF YOU DO ANYTHING TO ME, I'M GOING TO KILL THIS HOSTAGE. AND EVEN THOUGH THE BANK SECURITY HAS BY FAR SUPERIOR uh, FORCE AND THEY COULD STOP YOU, THEY WON'T STOP YOU, THEY WON'T KILL YOU BECAUSE THEY DON'T WANT TO HARM THE HOSTAGE. I BELIEVE THAT SATAN COULD NOT MAKE A FRONTAL ASSAULT ON GOD AND JUST OVERCOME HIM EVEN IF HE HAD HAD 100% OF THE ANGELS. WHAT HE HAD TO DO WAS FIND SOME WAY TO SHIELD HIMSELF FROM GOD'S WRATH. AND HE SAW THAT GOD LOVED MANKIND SO MUCH. IT SAYS IN REVELATION 4, FOR HIS PLEASURE WE ARE AND WERE CREATED. GOD CREATED THIS ENTIRE UNIVERSE, BUT SPECIFICALLY MANKIND. HE CREATED US FOR FELLOWSHIP. HE CREATED US out FOR HIS PLEASURE. HE GETS PLEASURE OUT OF US. HE WANTED TO HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH US. GOD LOVED ADAM AND EVE, AND SATAN SAW THAT HIS LOVE FOR ADAM AND EVE WAS SO GREAT THAT IF HE COULD GET ADAM AND EVE TO WILLFULLY SUBMIT TO HIM, THEN THAT SCRIPTURE I USED EARLIER, ROMANS 6, 16, KNOW YE NOT THAT TO WHOM YE YIELD YOURSELVES SERVANTS TO OBEY, HIS SERVANTS YOU ARE, TO WHOM YE OBEY, WHETHER OF SIN UNTO DEATH OR OF OBEDIENCE UNTO RIGHTEOUSNESS, IF HE COULD GET ADAM AND EVE TO YIELD TO HIM AND SUBMIT TO HIM, THEY GAVE HIM HIS POWER AND AUTHORITY. AND FOR GOD TO COME DOWN AND JUDGE SATAN, HE WOULD HAVE HAD TO HAVE DESTROYED MAN TOO BECAUSE THEY, IN A SENSE, WERE JOINT IN THIS REBELLION. MANKIND WILLFULLY PARTICIPATED. MAN BECAME A HOSTAGE. AND SO IN THAT SENSE, SATAN WAS ABLE TO USE MANKIND AS A SHIELD. GOD, THEY WILLFULLY SUBMITTED TO ME. FOR YOU TO DO ANYTHING TO ME, YOU'VE GOT TO PUNISH THEM TOO. AND I BELIEVE THAT SATAN MIGHT HAVE COME UNDER GOD'S JUDGMENT IF IT HAD JUST BEEN HIM, BUT BECAUSE OF GOD'S GREAT LOVE FOR US, AND MAN, I COULD USE SO MANY SCRIPTURES, A REAL POPULAR ONE, GOD SO LOVED THE WORLD THAT HE GAVE HIS ONLY BEGOTTEN SON, JOHN 3, 16. BECAUSE OF GOD'S GREAT LOVE FOR US, THE HOSTAGE, HE WOULDN'T JUST WIPE OUT SATAN AND ERADICATE THIS EVIL THAT HAPPENED. BUT HE WAS LIMITED, TOO, BECAUSE WE HAD WILLFULLY SUBMITTED. OUR GREAT, 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 WHATEVER GRANDFATHER AND MOTHER WILLFULLY SUBMITTED TO SATAN, AND THEY'RE THE ONES THAT MADE SATAN. GOD CREATED LUCIFER, A GODLY ANGEL. WHEN LUCIFER REBELLED, WE GAVE HIM THE AUTHORITY AND POWER. WE CREATED SATAN, AND HE CAN'T DO ANYTHING WITHOUT US AS A PHYSICAL HUMAN BEING COOPERATE. NOW, THIS EXPLAINS WHY IT TOOK 4,000 YEARS FOR GOD TO COME INTO THIS EARTH, BECAUSE THE ORIGINAL ADAM WAS CREATED BY WORDS. HE SPOKE HIM INTO EXISTENCE. 
THE SECOND ADAM, THAT'S A TERMINOLOGY THAT'S APPLIED TO JESUS IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 15. THE SECOND ADAM WAS JESUS. HE LIKEWISE HAD TO BE SPOKEN INTO EXISTENCE. BUT WHEN GOD CREATED THE HEAVENS AND THE EARTH, THERE WAS NO RESISTANCE. THERE WASN'T A SATAN AT THAT TIME. THERE WAS NO uh, CONFLICT OF ANY KIND. HE WAS IN ABSOLUTE CONTROL. HE HADN'T DELEGATED ANY CONTROL OR AUTHORITY TO MANKIND AT THAT TIME. BUT NOW HE HAD GIVEN THE EARTH TO MANKIND, PSALMS 115, VERSE 16, THE HEAVENS, EVEN THE HEAVENS ARE THE LORD'S, BUT THE EARTH HATH HE GIVEN TO THE SONS OF MAN. GOD GAVE DOMINION, CONTROL, AUTHORITY OVER THIS EARTH TO US, AND WHEN WE TURNED AROUND AND GAVE IT TO SATAN, THEN WE EMPOWERED SATAN, AND GOD WAS NO LONGER IN ABSOLUTE CONTROL OF THE EARTH. HE HAD DELEGATED THAT TO MANKIND. SO NOW FOR GOD TO SPEAK THE SECOND ADAM, JESUS, INTO EXISTENCE, HE HAD TO SPEAK THROUGH PEOPLE. A VERSE THAT I USED THE VERY FIRST DAY, BACK MONDAY OF THIS WEEK, IS EPHESIANS CHAPTER 3, VERSE 20, AND IT SAYS, NOW UNTO HIM WHO IS ABLE TO DO EXCEEDING ABUNDANTLY ABOVE ALL WE ASK OR THINK ACCORDING TO THE POWER THAT WORKS IN US. GOD FLOWS THROUGH US. NOW THAT HE HAS CREATED THE EARTH AND GIVEN AUTHORITY OVER THE EARTH TO MAN, HE FLOWS THROUGH MAN. HE DOESN'T DO THINGS INDEPENDENT OF US. HE ALWAYS HAS TO HAVE A PERSON TO WORK THROUGH. THERE HAD TO BE MOSES THAT GOD TOUCHED AND ANOINTED TO GO AND BRING THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL OUT OF THE LAND OF EGYPT. THERE HAD TO BE JOSHUA THAT LED THEM INTO THE PROMISED LAND. THERE WAS DAVID. THERE WAS SAMUEL. THERE WAS ISAIAH, JEREMIAH, EZEKIEL, ON AND ON IT GOES. AND LIKEWISE TODAY, GOD FLOWS THROUGH PEOPLE. HE DOESN'T DO THINGS INDEPENDENT OF PEOPLE. AND AGAIN, THIS IS ANOTHER GREAT MISCONCEPTION THAT A LOT OF PEOPLE HAVE. THEY THINK HE'S GOD. HE COULD JUST DO ANYTHING. NO, GOD HAD TO FLOW THROUGH PEOPLE. IT'S ACCORDING TO THE POWER THAT WORKS IN US. AND NOW HE HAD TO SPEAK JESUS' BODY INTO EXISTENCE. JESUS EXISTED FROM THE BEGINNING. THERE IS NO BEGINNING TO JESUS. Uh, COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 1 SAYS THAT ALL THINGS WERE CREATED BY JESUS AND FOR HIS PLEASURE. JESUS DID NOT START WHEN HE WAS BORN OF A VIRGIN IN BETHLEHEM. HE EXISTED FROM ETERNITY. HE IS GOD MANIFEST IN THE FLESH. BUT HIS PHYSICAL BODY HAD TO BE CREATED, AND HOW WAS GOD GOING TO DO IT? HE WAS GOING TO SPEAK IT INTO EXISTENCE, BUT HIM NOT BEING IN ABSOLUTE CONTROL ANYMORE, HIM DELEGATING THAT TO PEOPLE, HE HAD TO SPEAK THROUGH PEOPLE. AND SO HE HAD TO SPEAK CERTAIN THINGS BEFORE JESUS' PHYSICAL BODY COULD COME INTO BEING. AND THERE WAS JUST MULTITUDES OF THINGS THAT NEEDED TO BE SAID. OVER IN THE BOOK OF MALACHI, IT SAYS HE'LL BE BORN IN BETHLEHEM. Uh, THERE WAS MANY OTHER SCRIPTURES. ISAIAH GAVE A LOT OF PROPHECIES ABOUT JESUS. HE SAID IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 7, HE SAYS, A VIRGIN SHALL CONCEIVE AND BRING FORTH A CHILD. MAN, THAT'S RADICAL. I'M GLAD GOD DIDN'T ASK ME TO PROPHESY THAT A VIRGIN WAS GOING TO GET PREGNANT AND HAVE A CHILD. BOY, YOU'RE PUTTING YOUR LIFE ON THE LINE, YOUR REPUTATION ON THE LINE, AND YET ISAIAH WAS BOLD ENOUGH THAT HE SAID A VIRGIN IS GOING TO CONCEIVE AND BRING FORTH A CHILD, AND HIS NAME WILL BE CALLED WONDERFUL, COUNSELOR OF THE MIGHTY GOD, THE EVERLASTING FATHER, THE PRINCE OF PEACE. OF HIS KINGDOM THERE WILL BE NO END. Uh, MOSES PROPHESIED THAT THERE WAS GOING TO BE A PROPHET LIKE HIM. AND THERE'S JUST MULTIPLE PROPHECIES. DAVID PROPHESIED ABOUT HIM THAT HE WOULD BE RISEN FROM THE DEAD OVER IN THE 16TH CHAPTER OF PSALMS AND ON AND ON. AND SO ALL OF THESE THINGS HAD TO BE SPOKEN. AND YOU KNOW WHY IT TOOK 4,000 YEARS FOR JESUS TO SHOW UP? BECAUSE GOD COULD NOT FIND ANY ONE PERSON WHO WAS SO IN UNION WITH HIM AND SO SUBMITTED TO HIM THAT HE COULD SPEAK EVERYTHING THAT NEEDED TO BE SPOKEN. AND SO IT TOOK 4,000 YEARS FOR GOD TO SPEAK A LITTLE BIT THROUGH MOSES AND A LITTLE BIT THROUGH SAMUEL AND A LITTLE BIT THROUGH DAVID AND THEN ALL OF THE PROPHETS AND ON AND ON. AND IT TOOK 4,000 YEARS FOR GOD TO SPEAK JESUS' BODY INTO EXISTENCE. BUT THEN GOING BACK TO THE SCRIPTURE I STARTED THIS WHOLE SERIES WITH, GALATIANS 4.4, 4, WHEN THE FULLNESS OF TIME WAS COME, GOD SENT FORTH HIS SON. AFTER EVERYTHING WAS PREPARED, AFTER HE HAD SPOKEN EVERY PROPHECY THAT NEEDED TO BE SPOKEN TO CREATE THAT PHYSICAL BODY, 
I'M GOING TO SAY SOMETHING RIGHT HERE THAT I'M GOING TO HAVE TO GO INTO NEXT WEEK TO EXPLAIN, BUT LET ME JUST GIVE YOU A LITTLE TEASE. IF YOU CAN UNDERSTAND, IF YOU'VE TRACKED WITH ME UP TO THIS POINT, THIS IS AWESOME. THAT THE BIBLE SAYS THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS A SEED. 1 PETER CHAPTER 1, VERSE 23 SAYS, WE ARE BORN AGAIN, NOT OF CORRUPTIBLE SEED, BUT OF INCORRUPTIBLE SEED BY THE WORD OF GOD THAT LIVES AND ABIDES FOREVER. THE GREEK WORD FOR SEED IN 1 PETER 1, 23 IS SPORA. THAT'S LIKE A SPORE, YOU KNOW, THAT'S HOW A FLOWER IS POLLINATED BY THE SPORES GOING FROM ONE PLANT TO ANOTHER. AND THE WORD SPORA IS A DERIVATIVE OF THE GREEK WORD SPERMA, AND THAT'S WHAT WE TALK ABOUT, SPERM, A MAN'S SPERM. THIS IS HOW A CHILD IS CONCEIVED. SO THE WORD OF GOD IS CALLED A SEED, A SPERM. AND GOD SPOKE THESE WORDS THROUGH PROPHECY, THROUGH 4,000 YEARS OF PROPHECY, AND THEN WHEN IT CAME TIME FOR THE birth, VIRGIN BIRTH, WHEN THAT FULLNESS OF TIME CAME, THE ANGEL GABRIEL APPEARED AND MADE A PROPOSAL TO MARY. SHE ACCEPTED IT AND SAID, SO BE IT UNTO ME ACCORDING TO THY WORD. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? THE SPERM, THE WORD, THESE PROPHECIES THAT HAD BEEN SPOKEN FOR 4,000 YEARS ENTERED INTO THE WOMB OF MARY, AND THE VIRGIN BIRTH OF JESUS WAS NATURAL IN EVERY SINGLE WAY EXCEPT ONE, AND THAT WAS THAT A PHYSICAL MAN DIDN'T PROVIDE THE SEED. THE WORD OF GOD WAS THE SEED. AND THIS IS EXACTLY WHAT JOHN CHAPTER 1, AND THIS IS WHAT I'LL GET INTO NEXT WEEK. IT SAYS, IN THE BEGINNING WAS THE WORD, AND THE WORD WAS WITH GOD, AND THE WORD WAS GOD. THE SAME AS IN THE BEGINNING WITH GOD. ALL THINGS WERE CREATED BY HIM. AND THEN IN VERSE 14, THE WORD BECAME FLESH. HOW DID IT BECOME FLESH? ALL OF THESE PROPHECIES WERE SPOKEN. GABRIEL CAME AND MADE THE PROPOSAL TO MARY, AND WHEN SHE ACCEPTED, THE HOLY GHOST OVERSHADOWED HER, AND SHE CONCEIVED THROUGH THE WORD OF GOD. EVERYTHING ABOUT THE BIRTH WAS NORMAL EXCEPT a, a MAN DIDN'T PROVIDE THE SPERM. THE WORD OF GOD WAS THE SPERM. AND THEN MARY CONCEIVED AND GAVE BIRTH, AND JESUS CAME INTO THIS LIFE. I'VE GOT A LOT MORE TO SAY ABOUT THAT, BUT IF YOU CAN UNDERSTAND THAT, DID YOU KNOW IT'S THE SAME THING WITH US? YOU HAVE A SPIRITUAL WOMB, WHETHER YOU'RE MALE OR FEMALE. YOU HAVE A SPIRITUAL WOMB, AND YOU KNOW HOW YOU CONCEIVE A MIRACLE? YOU TAKE THESE WORDS, THESE PROMISES, AND YOU MEDITATE ON IT, MIX IT WITH FAITH, AND MAN, YOU CONCEIVE A MIRACLE, AND THEN YOU GIVE BIRTH TO IT. THERE ARE SO MANY PEOPLE PRAYING FOR A MIRACLE, BUT IT'S LIKE A VIRGIN PRAYING FOR A VIRGIN BIRTH. THERE WAS ONLY ONE VIRGIN BIRTH, AND THAT HAPPENED THROUGH THE WORD OF GOD BEING THE SPERM. YET THERE'S CHRISTIANS PRAYING, OH, GOD, HEAL ME, AND YET THEY DON'T KNOW WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THEY HAVEN'T TAKEN THOSE SPERM AND PLANTED IT IN THEIR HEART. BUT ONCE YOU UNDERSTAND THIS, INSTEAD OF JUST PRAYING FOR A MIRACLE, YOU SOW FOR A MIRACLE. YOU TAKE THE TRUTH OF GOD'S WORD AND SOW IT IN YOUR HEART, AND YOU CONCEIVE, AND THEN YOU GIVE BIRTH TO A MIRACLE. I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO CHECK OUT OUR AWM NOW STORIES AND ALSO OUR INSIDE STORY. THESE ARE THINGS WHERE WE JUST GO BEHIND THE SCENES AND SHOW YOU THINGS ABOUT PEOPLE IN THE MINISTRY, ABOUT THINGS THAT THE MINISTRY IS DOING THAT YOU'LL PROBABLY NEVER SEE ON TELEVISION, AND YET IT IS AWESOME. GOD IS TOUCHING PEOPLE'S LIVES ALL AROUND THE WORLD. AND SO YOU CAN GO TO AWMI.NET AND CHECK OUT THE AWM NOW STORIES AND ALSO OUR INSIDE STORIES. THEY'D BE A BLESSING TO YOU. I WANT TO LET ALL OF OUR ENGLISH SPEAKING AUDIENCE KNOW THAT WE ARE BEGINNING BROADCAST IN SPANISH, AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS GOING TO BE A DEAL CHANGER FOR MANY PEOPLE. WE'VE HAD A HUGE RESPONSE TO THE ENGLISH PROGRAM, AND THIS IS OUR FIRST TIME TO REALLY BE BROADCASTING IN SPANISH LIKE THIS, AND WE NEED PEOPLE TO HELP US. IF YOU WOULD LIKE TO HELP US ESTABLISH THIS MINISTRY TO THE SPANISH-SPEAKING WORLD, THERE WILL BE INFORMATION ON THE SCREEN. JOIN WITH US AND HELP US START THE SPANISH-SPEAKING BROADCAST OF THE GOSPEL TRUTH PROGRAM. BEFORE YOU WERE EVEN FORMED IN YOUR MOTHER'S WOMB, GOD ALREADY HAD DETERMINED A PURPOSE FOR YOUR LIFE, A GOD-GIVEN PURPOSE. GOD HAS A PURPOSE TO TRAIN YOU IN WHAT YOU'RE CALLED TO DO, AND I'LL TELL YOU, Karis BIBLE COLLEGE IS THE PLACE FOR THAT. 
Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis. The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. If you sit under the Word for four hours a day, for five days a week, for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. Every one of you are created for a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is? God's promises will become more real and alive when you get Andrew's complete teaching titled, The Word Became Flesh. This week I've been teaching on a series I call The Word Became Flesh, and I have this in CD, also in DVD that was taken either from television or a live teaching, and I tell you, this is awesome. I would encourage you to get this and to study it. This is the kind of thing that you just don't get it by listening to it on television in little 30-minute segments. You need to get the entire teaching and study it. I promise you it's a life-changing truth. It would really, really bless you. So listen to our announcer as he gives you this information. Andrew's complete teaching, The Word Became Flesh, is available as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast or in a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary is a combination of more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. Andrew has many conferences and seminars around the globe each year. For the latest information on Andrew's complete speaking schedule, visit our website at awmi.net slash events. For 20 years, Andrew Womack has been sharing the message of God's unconditional love and grace through his half-hour television program, Monday through Friday. Now, Andrew is broadcasting a full hour-long teaching each week. When God finds somebody who wants to be a giver and wants to bless somebody else, He will give seed to the sower. He will give seed to people who will sow it and give it to other people. Watch the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack.